Hello everyone, welcome back. I want to do a video today on pistol safety. Okay, that's a subject that comes up quite often. Um, we're going to talk about internal safeties versus external safeties. So one of the things I always tell people, the most important thing to know uh, with regards to safeties is first of all, the safety is basically between your ears. Okay, follow your gun safety rules and the gun is the safest thing in the world. So basically gun safety rules, keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you're ready to, to shoot and treat all guns like they're loaded. Okay, so that is the, 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 the primary safety. Now, as far as uh, mechanical safeties on the gun, uh, the number one safety, as far as mechanical safeties, uh, is the holster. Okay, uh, the holster has three functions. Number one, it carries the gun. Okay, uh, number two, it retains the gun so it cannot fall out of holster. And number three, it protects the trigger guard, right? Because uh, essentially you got to move the trigger back in order for the gun to fire. So even though this this uh, pistol over here is is, uh, is loaded with around the chamber, it, it, I can beat this all day. Nothing can, you know, this gun can't go off uh, unless that, that trigger moves back. Okay? So the, the, the Kydex holster, the modern Kydex plastic holster uh, is the primary uh, safety mechanism on pistols today, okay? Um, so this is, again, like I said, this is a Glock 26. I want to talk about um, the internal safeties on this. Um, and it's important because we're going to do, I'm going to show you a couple of other guns with, with, that have external safeties or different types of safeties. And we can do a comparison, okay? So with the, with the Glock or a Glock-like gun, when you rack the slide, right, you chamber the first round, the, um, what, what's happening is the gun goes into a, essentially a half cock position, okay? And then when you press the trigger, right, there's a little bit of slack, right? That slack that you're taking up, you're completing the cocking action, okay? Um, so, so what do we mean you're completing the cocking action? So when you rack the slide, right, picture a bow and arrow, right? In order to fire a bow and arrow, you got to pull it all the way back. So when you rack the slide, you're only pulling it about halfway back. Um, so in order for the gun to fire, you have to complete the cocking action and pull the bowstring all the way to the back uh, before it, you know, before you can release it. Okay, so that is one of the safety mechanisms that's built into the into the Glock. That when you when you chamber the round and you rack the slide, um, it is not fully cocked. The firing pin is not all the way back. You have to press the trigger to pick up that slack and complete the cocking action. Okay. Now the next safety on this is that little um, uh, the trigger safety, right? So there's this little leaf over here. Let me make sure it's in focus. All right. So there's this little leaf over there. If I if I hold this from the sides and try to push this down, you're gonna see that it doesn't go click. I actually have to put my finger on that leaf and then it will go click, okay? So that's the second safety mechanism uh, that's built into this pistol. There's a, a, uh, a trigger safety. Now, the the third safety mechanism uh, is the firing pin block, okay? So if you look over here, there's this, there's this safety plunger over here. And what that does is it actually, uh, blocks the firing pin so what happens is when you when you uh press the trigger bar right uh, you see that little shark fin over there so as you press this that that shark fin comes back okay and it, you know as the trigger moves back it moves the shark fin back it also moves your sear back over here so as you're pressing it you can see how you come on this side of the camera so you can all see it you can see that as you as you press see how you can you know you're completing the cocking action you're moving the sear to the back, uh, but you're also moving this shark fin back at the same time, okay? So as far as the sear that's in the back, uh, what that's doing is it's coming over here and it's grabbing, it's coming back and it's grabbing your firing pin, right? So that's the firing pin right there. So it's gonna grab this, pull this back, and then at a certain point it's gonna come down and it's gonna release it. So. That's what, we, what I meant earlier that this, this firing pin has to move all the way to the back uh, in order to have enough uh, force to be able to hit the primer, okay? So what, what's happening with that here is as you're, you know, th this is your firing pin, right? Or the firing pin lug. As you press the trigger, the sear comes back and down and releases the firing pin, right? 
So this is the action. You press the trigger, it comes down, back, releases the firing pin. Now, um, like I said, there's a firing pin block uh, that's activated by that shark fin. So the shark fin, as it moves back, hits the safety plunger right there, all right? And what that does is it moves that out of the way so that the firing pin can come through the hole, right? So if I, if I push forward on this, you're gonna see that that firing pin is not gonna come through the hole until I actually push this in and now it'll come through the hole, okay? So I have to push the safety plunger up so the firing pin will come through the hole. If I don't push it up, it doesn't matter how, how hard I push on it, it is not gonna come through that hole. Okay, so I have to push it. Okay, so um, that's really important. Uh, and this is, this firing pin block uh, is, a, is a design, is a safety feature that you're going to see in a lot of the other guns that we're gonna be talking about. So all those extra safety features that they put on the gun, they're kind of redundant, right? Because most of the other guns that I'm gonna talk about there, they all have that, that firing pin block, okay? Uh, so if you drop the gun and let's say uh, the sear slips and it slingshots the firing pin forward, it can't come through the through that little um, uh, that little peephole there because of that firing pin block. Okay, so that's that's a really important thing to understand. Um, you know, especially in terms of you know, because a lot of times people are nervous about carrying with around the you know loaded with around the chamber, um, and I find that once I make them understand the internal safety features uh, of, of striker fired guns, they feel a lot more comfortable with it, okay? Um, so, the, with a Glock style gun, okay, which has no external uh, safeties, uh, basically the, the safety is that the, fire, the, the trigger must move back in order to deactivate all of those three safeties that we talked about. And as long as it's in a hard plastic holster, you know, you, you, you can't get your finger there to move that, that, that trigger back, the gun cannot fire. Now, important thing here is this style of a gun, right, the strike a fire gun, has to be in a, in a kydex holster. It can't be in a leather holster. It can't be in a fabric holster. Now, I have seen some leather holsters that are, like, really tough, really rigid where it's like, yeah, when you look at it, it's brand new. You're saying, okay, right, okay, this thing is tough. It, let's say maybe even has a strap, right? Because a lot of times with the leather holsters, they might be tough, but a lot of times you have a retention issue, right, where it doesn't hold the gun in place, doesn't, because what, the, the place where this, this gun basically locks around the trigger guard to lock it in place. So, so a lot of times that's lacking with the leather holster. Um, but... Sometimes, so sometimes they'll have a strap that goes around the back. But the point I'm making, I was going to make here, is that uh, even though the the uh, the leather holster might be like really thick, and it, you know you might be okay, there's no way that this is going to collapse and accidentally hit the the trigger. As the gun gets, I'm sorry, as the holster, the holster gets older, right? Over the years with the sweat and it gets wet. Uh, what we find is that leather holsters sometimes start to collapse. They start to lose their form, uh, and what happens is they start to they start to cave in. And there's an, uh, there's a possibility that as you reholster the gun, it might come in and pinch the trigger. And as you go to reholster, uh, it fires the gun. Okay. Um, so with the with the Kydex holsters, nice thing about Kydex, it's basically it's either broken or it's not broken. Okay. If this is going to be broken, it's going to be like cracked and you know you know you're gonna know that it's broken it doesn't like slowly wear over time okay if at some point let's say you're running over with your car or something and you break it it is broken you can't use it okay it's obvious the, you know it's obvious when the kydex poster uh is is not working the main thing with it you just gotta make sure that it's form fitted to the gun and that it retains the gun uh and it's you know and and it, no chance of it falling out okay uh so let's talk about some other safety other types of safety so one of the other ones that sometimes is really uh are popular with people i guess you know is the double action only uh uh pistol okay so this one has no external safeties right so and again it goes in the kydex holster uh, but here's the thing, because this has, basically the safety mechanism of this is that long, hard trigger pull, okay? So every time you press the trigger, your finger has to 
exert a, a significantly more pressure than let's say on the Glock trigger to move that hammer all the way to the back and that is part of the safety mechanism part of the safety mechanism here is that you have a much harder trigger press okay so uh, one of the problems i find with these double action only triggers is that you get to, you know if you're shooting 100 200 300 rounds all right especially if you're doing a class or a competition it, your finger starts getting very tired okay so uh, what happens is you start your finger starts to get tired and you start losing accuracy you start slowing down uh and that's just the reality and the thing is when we say your finger's getting tired the fingers like all tendons in here right so there's no way to really you can't like significantly strengthen your finger right because there's not muscles in here they're tendons the tendons is what's getting tired right so it's not like you're gonna do forearm curls or something and strengthen your forearm you know i mean i got a, a nice size forearm and still if i'm shooting you know some 300 rounds of this i can see that you know i sh i'm not as accurate as i am uh with with the glock right because again with the glock my finger is simply doing less work it's easier okay now one of the benefits of the um of the double action only pistol right is it doesn't have to go in a kydex holster because it has that added safety feature of the long hard trigger um you know um it can go let's say in a purse holster or a fabric holster uh, so that's what you know, so that's one of the benefits. So over here. I have a Ruger LCP um, So this is a gun that I carried for a while and I and um, for a while I carried this in a uh, in a in a soft collapsible uh, Inside the waistband holster. Okay, um, so the gun was small light really convenient and uh, it, it because it had that has that long hard trigger pull right with the hammer having to move all the way to the back every single time uh, this is a gun that I could carry in a soft collapsible holster. The problem with that is that you, with a soft collapsible holster, especially inside the waistband, is extremely difficult to reholster the gun. Um, so you, you know, you can be somewhat quick coming out of the holster, right? But you're not going to be very quick going back into the holster, right? Especially if it's inside of the waistband. So again, that's an advantage of the. Um, where are you? There it is. That's it. That's an advantage of the um, of the uh, uh, Kydex holster. You're able to get to, to do lots of repetitions. Go in, go out. Okay. One of the things you just gotta be careful of is make sure you got your shirt out of the way. Okay. Um, so that as you're going in, you don't want your shirt uh, getting caught up between the trigger and the holster. You know, you don't want the fabric, the material getting in there. Um, so as you're going back into the holster, if you're feeling any resistance, slow down. Okay, if you need to look, look. Um, you know, a lot of people are big on don't look when you reholster. You know, I tell people, listen, we're usually in a rush to come out of the holster. We're not necessarily in a rush to go back in the holster. Now, in a self-defense situation, yes, we want to get the gun back in the holster as fast as possible because other people coming onto the scene... They don't know what, what happened. They don't, you, basically, you don't want people to see you, you know, after defensive shooting type of situation, holding a gun, okay? But, you know, there's no difference between taking like one second and two seconds, or two seconds or three seconds, okay? So if you need to slow down to get back in the holster a little bit, get, slow down a little bit, uh, you want to make sure that your clothes does not get caught up in the trigger guard as you reholster, okay? So you come out fast. But then you can slow down going back in there, okay? Like one of the things I'll teach people, you come out, bang, 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 cover up the gun, right? You can do your scan assess, look around, right? And then, you know, once you're convinced that it's safe to go back in the holster, you know, you can, you know, not rush to get back in the holster, but, you know, quickly get back in the holster, but without going so fast that, you know, you have an accident, okay? So so you, you, you want to get in the holster as fast as possible, but... Not so fast that, like, you're not sensitive to your clothes or something getting caught up in the trigger guard, okay? So, uh, the point I was trying to make with the double action only pistols is because it's a, uh, you know, it has that double action only, okay? That's a, um, uh, a safety feature that would allow you to use a fabric holster. And sometimes, especially with women, with women sometimes the way they dress 
or if sometimes they'll have a, a, a purse holster which has a separate compartment for the holster uh, and that a lot of times that's fabric you know so so this is an option for some situations um, even though I was using this gun with a fabric holster for some time I ended up getting a hard kydex holster for it because it's just better okay i'm able to do lots of repetitions in and out of holster so so this is this is the way to go and these are also pretty cheap holsters i think i got this from amazon it was like something like 20 dollars. okay this one is from uh pole craft you know like i was carrying this for about a year worked fine okay so that's the double action only okay so now we're going to go on to some other designs so let's talk about the um the the single action double action okay so the on this the safety mechanism is that you got a hammer here right um get that mag out. right okay so you got the external hammer there's a decocker here that basically allows you to drop the hammer okay All right so to decock this uh, you're going to basically push down now that's in safety mode now you get a dead trigger so it's down and up okay so so it's two actions down and then up okay um so the down basically it activates the safety right because if you leave it like this you've got a dead trigger okay uh you have to push it back up okay so one of the problems that i have seen repeatedly uh over the years with this design is a lot of times people will when they decock the gun right so they start with the, you know they fire a couple of shots hammer down now they got a dead trigger. They'll reholster the gun like this. So the next time they come out of the holster, they got a dead trigger, and they're like they have like a brain freeze, and they don't know why the gun's not working. Um, so one of the things I teach people is with this style of a gun, right, with this Beretta 92 style, that where basically you have to push forward to make sure that the safety is off. I teach people to shoot with the thumb up, right, in this position here, because if the safety is down, right. You're gonna feel it, right? You see how I'm gonna I'm hitting it there, and I'm gonna feel it. Okay, so I teach people to 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 shoot this gun with their thumbs up in this position like this. So if they happen to forget the safety on, they're gonna immediately feel it when they're when when they're in this position over here. So that's how I teach people to shoot this gun with the with this thumb pointed up. So if the safety needs to be down, it happens to be down, they're gonna feel it. Okay, so. So, those, so the two problems with this design, okay, is number one, lots of times people forget, like, to, uh, first of all, they, they, well, they forget to put the safety on, because lots of times people will reholster this gun with with the hammer back without decocking it, okay, and that's not how this gun was designed to be used. Even though it also has a firing pin block, you know, uh, Beretta's instructions are to decock the gun, okay, um, uh, so... So this gun was meant to be decocked before you holster it. So very common people will forget, especially on the stress. You're like, hey, when I shoot this gun at the range, I never forget. Yeah, but if you if I start stressing you out, you know, making you do repetition, start moving from target to target and shooting and reholstering and doing other stressful things, I find people very quickly start forgetting to decock this gun, and the gun ends up going back in the holster like that. Okay, or when they do remember to decock it, they'll just put it, they'll, they'll hit the, um, uh, you know, they'll, they'll basically put the safety on, but they're not going to push forward. So when they come, next time they come up out of the holster, they got a dead trigger. They, they basically got a dead man's gun. Okay, yeah, the gun, you know, in a real life situation, they would be dead because the gun is not working. Okay, so just in case anybody is not familiar with the double action, single action design, the way this works is the chamber around, right? Also, the other problem I see with this design is when people run the slide, a lot of times they'll put the safety on, okay? So, um, with this style of a gun, I usually recommend to people to actually use the slide release, right? With the Beretta 92, they give you a really big slide release. So, I tell people to use that because anytime they're doing this, a lot of times they're going to accidentally put the safety on. So, that's another problem with these external safeties, right? The problem, the problem with external safeties is they're usually on when you want them off, off when you want them on, okay? Uh, so that's another problem I see with this design under stress when people are rushed. Uh, a lot of times as they're running the slide, they will, they will accidentally engage the safety 
well, when they don't intend to. Uh, sometimes, like in the winter time, sometimes people are wearing thick gloves, so it's a lot. It's not so easy to reach the slide release, so they have to run the slide instead of hitting the slide release. Uh, and that's a lot of times that's when I see people accidentally engaging the safety. Okay, so. Um, the way this gun is supposed to work, you, you carry the holster around the chamber, hammer it down, you come out, right, you come out, engage, first, first shot you fire is double action, which means you got a long, hard trigger pull, okay, after the slide cycles, you're now, the hammer is going to reset to the back, so your subsequent shots are now going to be, uh, a, basically a single action, okay, so the first shots are a long, hard trigger pull, all the subsequent shots are lighter trigger pull until you manually decock it, okay? So the idea with this gun or the benefit is that you have the benefit of the additional safety of that, of while you're carrying the gun in the holster with a long, hard tr trigger pull, right? Uh, but after you fire the first shot, you now, you know, and the, and the hammer resets, you're, you now have a lighter trigger pull, so in theory, you're now able to make more accurate shots. Uh, your finger is going to get less tired. Uh, in practicality, right, and I've actually I've worked with this gun for a very long time. In practicality, what happens is, um, regardless of how much training you have with the gun, you tend to forget the difference from the first trigger pull to your second trigger pull. So the first trigger pull, you're coming out of holster. A lot of times I'll see people like, oh shit, I got a hard trigger pull. Right? And then what happens is after the hammer resets, the next shot, they're expecting a hard trigger pull. And now they're, they're doing that, right? And they're, they're jerking the gun down and putting the shots in the dirt. So this change, right? This inconsistent trigger pull from hard to light, right? Then back to hard when you decock. Uh, it, it it diminishes people's accuracy. It messes with their brains, okay? So that's why I, uh, even though I, I, I worked with this gun for quite a bit, eventually I got away from it because it just made training people a lot harder, okay? People, uh, you know, we had issues with the gun going in the holster, um, you know, on not, not decocked. We had issues with when basically the uh, gun came back out of the holster, the safety was on, um, and it was, especially if you're working with lots of different people, different people were forgetting different things. It just made the training a lot more difficult. Okay, so that's why I just, I, I completely got away from the using, uh, recommending and, and, and using double action, single action type guns. Um, nice thing about the Beretta though is it does have the decocker on both sides. Okay, and there's, there is also a kit that you can get, uh, which basically turns the decocker uh, into a decocker only. So after you engage, press the safety down, it automatically pops up. If you're gonna carry this style of gun, I would definitely recommend that you get that kit and install it, where if you press the safety down and release it, it will automatically pop up. Highly recommend that. Okay. Um, now the, the other style, again, this is also a double action, single action, like this SIG over here, right? Um, the magazine out. Now, these are guns that, like, I really don't shoot that often. That's why I just keep the magazines in them, right? Like, with Glocks, I've got, like, literally, like, like 50 to 100 magazines. With these other guns, I might have, like, I don't know, uh, 10 magazines for each because they just don't get used that often. Um, so, with the with the SIG, and this is the, which one is this? This is the 2022. Um, it has the decal. Same thing. It's double action, single action. Everything else, uh, everything that I said before applies. The difference is that the decocker is down here. Okay. So after, so basically, you fire the first shot. First shot is a. So decocker. First shot is a long, hard trigger pull. Okay. Then the gun cycles, and your subsequent shots are now a short trigger pull. Same issues with people um, putting this gun in the holster without decocking it. Um, we don't have that problem of, because when you press this down, it automatically pops up. So we don't have the issue of people um, forgetting to just leave it in safety mode and the gun not working. So that doesn't work with this. Uh, the problem I find with this gun is because of the, the way the safety is here, it's flat. If people's hands are sweaty, uh, it's a lot, they're, they're, it's very 
likely that the thumb is going to slip. Um, with the Varela design, just because it's bigger, sticks out more. Although sometimes I'll see people's thumbs slip off of this as they try to decock it. Um, with, you know, with the fig design, I see it more often where people's thumbs are slipping off the decocker when they try to uh, decock it. Uh, the other thing with the SIG design is it only has it on one side, okay? So if you're a lefty, uh, you're screwed. Basically, you have to do, the, do it. As a lefty, you have to do it with your index finger. All right? I mean, it works, right? You can see how I'm doing it. All right, so this is not a great design for a lefty. You got to get used to that. I mean, I, 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 I can do it. I've done it. Um, there, I think H and K is one of the few companies that has this design with the decocker on the other side. I think I've seen that. Um, so just be aware if you really want this design. Uh, H and K is one of the few companies that where you can get that on the other side. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So again, this is double action, single action. Has all of the almost all of the issues as the Bra ninety two. People uh, putting this in the holster without decocking it. We don't have the issue of the safety being accidentally. Even in the winter, right? If people are running the slide with with the um, with with thick winter gloves, because of where the safety is down there, they're not going to accidentally uh, flip the you know flip the safety on, and the gun's not going to work. Okay? But again, the, the problem is with the thick gloves is they can't hit, they can't activate that. Okay? So in the winter time, this gun just doesn't work because people can't. You know, you know, with thick winter gloves, they cannot activate the safety, I'm sorry, the decocker in order to uh, decock the gun. Okay. Uh, let's move back over here. So finally, let's talk about the 1911 design. Okay. Now, you got 1911 has all, all these guns, with the exception of this Ruger LCP, have the firing pin block. Okay. Um, the, the, now the, the Ruger LCP, it's double action only. So the hammer, you know, it's normally rested down or actually it's in a half cock position. So it has to move back. So the Ruger LCP is the only one that does not have the firing pin block. All these other guns have that firing pin block, uh, which I believe originated with, with the 1911, uh, uh, Browning was, I think the first to, or one of the first, if not the first to incorporate the firing pin block into one of his pistols um, and uh, he also has the basically also has the back strap safety where your hand has to be over here in order to uh, in order to to uh, deactivate the safety so this has external this has something like five safeties right it's got like three internal I think and two internal um, or maybe even three internal I, I forget how this has a shit ton of safeties it makes um, maintaining this gun really difficult. Like if you want to, like I mean, obviously you can. Well, first of all, even just just getting the slide off and taking the gun apart can be a pain in the ass. Uh, but if you really want to, like you know, get down into the internals, it's a lot of work with this gun. Okay, so one of the reasons why I I generally don't use it that much for training because it's it's really hard to 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 maintain. You know, as far as like getting all the way inside, pulling the trigger out, that's it's a lot of work. You know, pulling all the, the parts out of the, uh, um, um, you know, pulling the firing pin out, all that stuff, it's a lot of work. So I, I generally try to avoid using this gun too much because I don't want to do all that work, okay? I'm, I'm basically in the business of training people. I'm not in the, uh, in the you know, gunsmithing business where I'm constantly taking guns apart and putting them back together, okay? So... Uh, I, that's why I prefer to use guns that are the least amount of maintenance, you know, the least amount of maintenance to work. So ex as far as external safeties, you've got the external back strap, you've got the thumb safety. Okay, So deal with the thumb safety is, um, again, when you come out of the holster, right, the only way to, be, to know for sure that your safety is off, you, with this you have to ride your thumb on top of the safety. Okay, So with the Beretta... Your thumb points up, right, to make sure that your 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 safety is disengaged, right? Because if it's down, you'll feel it. So thumbs up. With the 1911, it's the opposite. Thumbs down on top of the safety, right? So whatever direction you need to move the safety to disengage it, that's what your you know your thumb. That's where your thumb needs to be 
uh, you know, pressing up against in order to make sure that that safety is off, okay? Um, if most people, when they shoot 1911s, they shoot it, they, they don't know to ride their thumb on top of the safety. If your if the safety happens to be on, the gun's not going to work, okay? So that's why we shoot the 1911 with the, with the thumbs riding on top uh, of the safety. Now, interestingly, the... Um, the, the thumb safety was actually uh, an afterthought from what I, uh, from what I read. Uh, Brown, Browning and his prototypes did not include a thumb safety. Uh, he just had the back strap safety, okay? Uh, and he was, he, was, he was comfortable with that. Um, the reason why he had to, he felt that he needed to add the thumb safety is because at the time, uh, the... Um, the uh, the holsters had not developed. They were just using leather holsters that were not form fitted to the gun. They had like a flap that came over the top. Um, so what happened was after you fired the gun, right? You had a round the chamber. Hammer was back. Okay. So now you got to get this back into the holster. So as you're trying to holster the gun, you basically you have you have deactivated the safety. Back in 1910, 1911 these ideas of finger discipline right and even uh you know just the general gun safety rules had not been fully uh developed they weren't like always followed um religiously okay um so people were concerned about accidentally shooting themselves as they uh were going to um uh as, as they were going to basically be holster the gun um and that's why uh browning added the thumb safety Again, mostly because the holsters weren't fully developed. They were just using these leather holsters. And many times they were just like soft, soft leather holsters. And they didn't feel comfortable with the back strap safety alone. So they added the thumb safety. Okay, And the original design only had the thumb safety on the, on the left side. Didn't have it on the right side. These Rock Island ones, uh, Rock Island 1911s, are very close to the original uh, um, 1911 design one of the things i hate about the original 1911 design is the, the the sights on these are horrible okay they're really low uh with my eyesight i can i can barely see them the same color as the as 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 the gun um on my i mean i do have other 1911s that have better sights but on this original design these these sights are horrible for me okay it's very hard for me to use them but anyway i wanted to show you guys the original design it only had the the safety on the left side didn't have it on that side um, and with this design if you're gonna have if you're gonna shoot this style of a pistol uh, basically your thumb has to ride on top of the thumb safety in order to make sure it's deactivated okay now uh, I also recommend that you guys take advantage of modern holster technology okay get yourself a if you're gonna carry a 1911 get yourself a kydex holster now, with the Kydex holster, it does not matter if you put the, the thumb safety on or off, okay? Uh, because the gun internally still has a firing pin block, just like your Glock over there, okay? Uh, so, uh, I believe they call they refer, they refer call this condition zero, okay? This is actually something that they did back in the day, or they considered it doing back in the day, where they did not use the thumb safety, um, although I don't think it was that popular. Uh, in fact, most from what I hear, most GIs prefer to carry the 1911 without around the chamber because again the, the holster technology had not caught up yet okay um so uh today with modern day holsters we could theoretically carry this with the thumb safety down because the the um um the the, the, the holster protects the trigger guard it has an internal um firing pin block it also has some additional internal uh, safeties that i forget um but i i still i would probably recommend that you use the thumb safety just because it's there and that's probably what the manufacturer is going to re recommend uh so the main thing with this is you've got to remember when this comes out of the holster thumb goes on top of your thumb safety because that's the only way you're going to be sure that the gun's going to work okay and then thumb you know you got to flip it up all right and then you can you, you know this gun was meant to be carried uh, cocked and locked, right? With the hammer back, you know, put, flip your safety on. That's how it goes into the into the holster. Okay. Um, so uh, with all these, you know, we, I think we discussed all the major main types of safeties out there. Um, for most people, I recommend a striker fire gun. 
uh, like this Glock. Um, it's a lot easier to train people under stress. There's less things that they gotta think of. All the, the only guy remember is after they shoot to basically safely reholster the gun. They don't have to remember if they gotta hold the gun with the thumbs up or thumbs down. They don't have to remember if they gotta detox. They don't have to remember if the first trigger pull is gonna be hard and the other ones are gonna be easy. And uh, it's, I find for most people, especially beginners, the less things they gotta think about, uh, the, you know, the better they get, the faster they can get. And uh, I mean, ultimately, you know, you know I, I try to move people as quickly as possible beyond just target shooting and gun handling i want to get them into into tactical you know realistic self-defense training okay um it, when i use guns i have lots of buttons and 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 and, and um you know basically the uh, uh inconsistent trigger pulls i find that i spend way too much time training people on those things uh, rather than the important things such as get behind cover shoot move to another piece of cover, you know, shoot, you know, uh, you know, and, and try to stress, you know, try to train them to be able to function under stress. So, you know, I, I want to get people to that level, you know, moving and shooting on the 360 degree, 360 degree range. I want them thinking about, you know, what the next target is. I want them thinking about where I am next to them as we're moving through a, a 3D range. You know, I want them thinking about those type of things. I don't want them sitting there spending all the time thinking about, you know, is the safety on, safety off, or is, you know, what's the trigger pull going to feel like and, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, there are my thoughts on that. I hope this video was useful for you guys. Uh, drop some comments below and I'll talk to you all soon.